All right. Um, guys, on behalf of our board of directors and our, our, our outstanding lineup of speakers, we want to welcome you all to the 10th annual convention. Um, thanks to all of you, all of you out there, we've made it through 10 years with this event. And honest, guys, with your continued support, we pledge that we will work even harder for you the next 10 years to keep this going and making it bigger and better. <laughs> now, an event like this, of course, um, takes a lot of work and it begins with our board of directors and those of you that are in the audience if you'll stand up I just would like people to see you if you guys have anything good to say about the event or anything bad to say about anything bad go see these guys <laughs> no seriously okay there's Don Ware back there Don yeah Ken Seddington, are you out there? There's Ken, our director from the United Kingdom. Professor Sun Shi Li is our director from mainland China. He's due in, I think, tomorrow. Um, Colonel Wendell Stevens is here. I'm not sure he's in the hall right now. Wendell, are you out there? No, I think you all know Wendell. Professor A. J. Givyard from Brazil is not able to be with us this year. This is, I think, only the second time he's not been able to come. Uh, his son had an accident. He extends his apologies for not being here. Um, Virginia Bennett, are you out there? Okay, she's, in, she's out in the front working. All right, who did I forget? Michael Hessman will be um, arriving tonight, guys. He's uh, en route. He's in the airplane right now. Called us on the cell phone. Said he's coming. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm ready to tell you a little bit about our opening speaker, Mr. Ron Russell. I've had the honor to know Ron for a few years now. And Ron is a true crop circle researcher. As a matter of fact, everybody that's here today to talk to you about this crop circle phenomena is a true researcher as opposed to a crappie. Now, for those of you that don't know what a crappie is, a crappie is someone that has taken a flight to England, has went into a crop circle, has come out, and is now a professed crop circle researcher. And Ron, his background, he's been an artist for 40 years and a phenomenal artist. You can see his, some of his art on display upstairs in the exhibit hall. A great artist. He's done work for uh, very famous people. He's done work for very famous production companies, in including Star Trek, by the way. He's worked for NASA depicting uh, things in the space program. So he brings in a, an extreme sensibility, an artist's eye to this whole phenomena of crop circles. And he brings a big, giant human heart to the attempt to understand it and what it all means. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm really, really proud to bring you our first speaker, Ron Russell. Thank you, Bob. Um, I, I'd like to say that this is a very special group of people, a very special gathering, and I feel really honored to open it. I, I mean, that's just amazing to me. And I'd like to like you all to put your hands together for Bob and Terry and their whole crew who <laughs> do. Thank you very much.
Now it's true, the rumor that I've been an artist, my God. You know. And um, what I noticed when I began doing these paintings for uh, Werner von Braun, which some of which are now in the Smithsonian Museum, is that people who saw them had a shock reaction. There, there was some, something going on, some kind of magic going on. I began to publicly exhibit in the 70s at, at art festivals and gallery shows, and some people would fall over. Uh, I mean, at the shock of seeing this kind of work. Um, so what that told me back then was that art has power, or, or it can have if it's good art. We won't talk about the art that's decorating this marvelous facility. <laughs> art has power, and, and that's a mystery, and the art process is a mystery. It's not usually public, except for rock and roll, you know, writers write alone, painters paint alone, this kind of thing. And um, the crop circles are an art of a kind and uh, are as mysterious as ever and as wonderful as ever. This is now my, this year will be my ninth year and uh, I'm, I'm privileged to do this, to research, to investigate. And sometimes I'm just a crappie. I, I just enjoy it. There's two things you do. Could I have the first slide, please? There's two things that I do that I recommend when you go into a crop circle. And wherever you're from in this country or from around the world, you um, can do this when an event occurs near you. And these crop circles appear all over the earth. It's not just southern England. Southern England gets a lot of press, mainly because it's one of the most beautiful places on earth. And um, it's also amazingly uh, special. In, in a way that we'll talk about a little bit later. These two things you do is right brain and left brain. You want to do your science, your investigation, your discernment, your critical thinking. You, you, want, you don't want to throw that out because that's really important. You want to know, well, what are the f what's the physical evidence? Um, how does it appear? Uh, is there any anomalous energies? The second thing you want to do, you can do them um, in reverse order too, it's up to you, is space out. Meditate. Empty your mind. Don't stop the chattering and just be there empty and let it or whatever is a associated with it fill you. You'll never have a bad experience. I mean, it, it's a kind of contact that's happening. We love these little circles. Could I have the next slide, please? Oh, I do that. I forgot. <laughs> well, better to get all the little mistakes out of the way first. This year in Canada, no tram lines. The, these, were, these pathways were made by the first people who walked into the field near Ontario, Canada. This is a, just the kind of event that we, we think does come from beyond. In British Columbia a couple of years ago, um, Chad Deakin was one of the first uh, people to go into this. And you can see the pilot. There's a nearby airport. And the pilot took this picture. He just happened to have a camera. 
and happened to fly that morning and a plane went over the field and he took this picture. There are no entry lines. There, there are no tractor lines in this field. You can't walk down the seed drill rows. There, there's only one inch. So this is another excellent example. Chad went in there and precisely measured it and BLT labs in Michigan did physiological work on the tissues of the plant. This is an anomalous event. It, it could not have been done by humans. Again, um, a, simple, a simple form this year from Canada. which has uh, been repeated many, many times. Th this, this shape has some meaning. Um, I'm not here to decipher that. I'll just give you some clues and you put the pieces together. Um, in fact, one of our speakers to, uh, tomorrow the next day, um, Andy Thomas, um, was in this formation when I was in it. And I think he can attest to the fact that we were enchanted. We felt enchanted in this. Now, it was kind of curious for me because I didn't feel anything here, but I did here. And um, another lovely formation. And look at the analog of this uh, in, in the fallen lintel stone, a 40-ton stone of Stonehenge. Very similar design. And this is so encrusted with lichen that it could easily be thousands of years old, that carving. Could be. So these designs are very important, as is the circle itself. The designs are, are important. I, uh, um, I have to say, sometimes I go into ecstatic states. I like altered states a lot. And uh, I, mean, I don't go out and get drunk and stuff, but, but I like altered states because that's what religion's based on, you know, and the hypnagogic state as you're falling asleep or hypnopopic, whatever, I get them mixed up, I don't know. You can solve a lot of problems. I mean, and make, you know, really a wonderful state. So I kind of, when I see the craftsmanship in a formation, it, it, it delights me. Sometimes I go overboard. It's a photo by Jorgen Kronick. Again, you don't see an entry point or an exit point. Energy made it, not mechanics. This is a close-up from one of my favorite formations, uh, and I uh, told you a little bit about this last year, but, uh, but I'll show something about it. Uh, could I have a video B, please? please? I'm supposed to say please, and then they'll do it. No, no sound, no sound. Uh, no sound on any of the video. But just, there we go. Um, again, the scent, this is uh, Bert Jansen and Janice Osbard uh, uh, video, a wonderful video, um, showing quickly, even better than I could do with my slides, some of these amazing details. This is the center of, of a, a crop circle. Showing some of these details so you get an idea. I'm going to intersperse my slides with a little video this year. It's kind of, I think it's, it gives you a sense of it. And I know you're going to have questions. I 
respectfully wish that you would reserve those questions for the panel. We're, we have a very special um, program for you. We're, there are five of us going to get up here, uh, and you can run us through the gauntlet with your questions. So save the questions to later. This is just a, a short segment. There's, um, there's a point at which I wanted you to see some of the detail that we occasionally find is so amazing that, uh, here, watch this guy. This is the center. I mean, what? Okay, could we stop the video, please? And the slide again. Thank you. So I, I really like these centers. I really like the craftsmanship. I like the whole phenomena. Because it's a kind of contact, and, uh, and it is very, upon analysis, it's very complex. It is not simple. There isn't one answer. There isn't one cause. And there isn't one effect. I mean, it affects people individually. And, um, and I think that's where the power of these crop circles come. It's in their effect on us possibly even the effect on the crop and the land and the world. And, you know, you can, you can move in that direction. Here we have a white horse up on the ceiling. This is the white horse of Cheryl. This was a formation, 1993. Um, it doesn't fit, but that's okay. Uh, which had a little vortex print within the larger circle. Had two of them, as a matter of fact, uh, 180 degrees opposed. So it's these kind of detail that make me think that we're dealing with some uh, great artists, wherever they're from. Now, I love showing this uh, slide. Uh, this is Peter Sorensen's hand. Is Peter in the audience? He, he's not here yet. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, Peter and I go around uh, to these formations and find things. And um, this is what I would say uh, is and this came not from a tram line, the tractor line which runs through the field. You know, they don't do aerial spraying in England. They do spraying from the tractor booms. So they have to have those tram lines. And you'll see more of that as we go on. Um, but this did not come from the tram line. This came from the formation. And there were many of these swollen and bent growth nodes. This implies energy was used, possibly microwave, was used in the softening and placing down of the plant. Uh, this is not generally thought of to be a, a human ability. I don't know of anybody that can do that. I certainly don't see anybody lugging equipment in the field like this. So I mean, this is kind of the, the evidence we look for. However, this kind of bend, in where the bend is in the shaft itself, I have actually seen being made uh, by humans. So this is not the kind of evidence that you would want to use to determine if a crop circle were, was made by human beings or if it came from beyond. Now, now that sort of opens up a whole bunch of stuff. 
If it comes from beyond, if the causal agency of the formation is from beyond us, and, and, and it's, it, it's ET, um, astral beings and time travelers, or elementals, endemic forces of the earth, um, other dimensionals, whatever. And, and it's likely that it's all of that, all of that. Not a simple thing. Just as it's not simple to say that all man-made formations are de facto hoaxes. Because a hoax implies a deception. A hoax is, is a formation that's done when people are trying to trick somebody into with the smoke and mirrors. And at the edge of reality, which the crop circles certainly are a part of, we have other motives where humans go out to make a spiritual place or to make art. This is, these are not, by my understanding, these, it would be improper to call that a hoax. So, and, and, and I'm making this point because the word hoax is real pejorative. It'd be like a visitor coming in and you scream, it's an alien. Well, right away, you've categorized and and caused a prejudicial kind of thinking. Uh, we, we'd rather not call them aliens. Maybe they're visitors or whatever, but let's not load the word <coughs> with so much emotion. A hoax is a particular kind of man-made formation that's done to trick us, to fool us, like the Doug and Dave kind of thing. And there are some of those, but there aren't as many as um, we would be led to believe. Um, in a crop called canola, oilseed rape, John Holman sent me this slide, where the shaft there is bent. And um, the bloom here can be very easily, uh, very easily receive a print of any mechanical device le uh, that pushes down the crop. So we're very impressed when we find bent stems in canola, which are pretty big. Another nice clue, wherever you go, you, you, some of you will come upon a crop circle. And I ask that you take my little flyer because on the bottom of the front page I have all my addresses, name, phone numbers, and uh, email and all that. And let me know. I mean, this is an interactive thing because we don't get intelligence just like in the UFO community. It's just individuals making sightings and then spreading that information. So if you have knowledge of a crop circle, we would love for you to inform us and to go out and investigate us. And if you call, I can tell you a, a little, give you some heads up about what to do. In a flowering crop, like mustard is, is a relative of this canola, how would mechanical pressure be used to push this down and, and not hurt the flowers? This is from uh, Levengood's uh, laboratory. I myself have seen thousands of shafts of wheat where the growth node is blown out, exploded. Um, we were with ABC 2020 in a formation in, in, uh, at Cowden, Hampshire, 1993, four, and we went, um, into this formation with a farmer's permission. ABC TV paid the farmer, and we showed the farmer thousands of these blown nodes in this amazing crop circle. And he said, oh, gosh, 
I, I didn't notice that. I, I, I've never seen that before. And there were only where the crop was pushed down, not in the standing crop or anywhere else in the field. And uh, I, I, ABC TV cut that out of, you see what happened. This is very common. I, I believe this is a um, one, one of our tests of anomalous energy is the deviation from true north, in this case it's about 35 degrees, uh, of a compass. More sophisticated than this, we can use flux gate magnetometers and get a profile of the magnetic readings in a crop circle which are different than the surrounding area. Um, Dr. Simeon Hine, who is here and, and will be at our table, uh, he teaches remote viewing, by the way. I hope he brought some brochures. That is whew, amazing stuff um, and fun. Uh, came up with the idea a couple of years ago to measure electrostatic energy because he, we got a very sensitive little electrostatic meter. And we went out into the field to measure electrostatic potential differences and we find them to be in some correspondence with the magnetic differences. So there's an electromagnetic effect in these crop circles. Not in every crop circle, but in some. Now, this is very interesting. Um, Karen Saunders was with me last year. She's finding a, a, a deviation, a slight deviation here in this formation. But this gizmo down here, which she set on the ground, was melted when she picked it up. I don't know why this is making this noise. Um, it was the circuits inside were melted in this gizmo. Now this gizmo is Stephen Greer's uh, detector for changed uh, electromagnetic field when uh, a close encounter occurs. This little thing goes beep, beep, beep. Well, you can believe the military have this too. We got this from Raytheon. Raytheon in, our, in, in Denver has a huge building with uh, no windows at all. <laughs> in fact, you can't even apply for a job there. You have to do it over the internet. Can't go in. So while she found some deviations at the center, we find in, in our electrostatic profile that there's less energy in the center and more about midway or a meter or two out from the center. It, it seems to spike up. Um, Iowa, in corn, in, in maize, corn. Kansas, in uh, winter wheat. This girl had to get glasses after she left the formation. She, her vision became blurry. These are all clues. I mean, this is not an, an evil kind of energy. It's, a, it's an energy. Possibly that was coincidence. Possibly not. But the energy affects us. And it affects our instruments. Soybeans in Iowa. Uh, this also is one of my favorite formations and my, one of my favorite places in the world. This is Silbury Hill. It's a man-made mound or man -made conical pyramid, you might say. Uh, probably made 6,000 years ago or p 
possibly more, and um, dominates this landscape. Why would Neolithic, this is pre-Celtic stuff, Neolithic man who lived here, why would they move millions of, uh, you know, little baskets of soil to make this? Uh, I mean, and it's in a depression. Well, I think this crop circle phenomena is so strong and the nexus of it is in this area of Wiltshire, southern England. I think it's so strong there because we should pay some attention to this land. This is very old, sacred land. The land itself has been sculpted. This goddess figure right by Silbury Hill, the umbilicus running out to Swallowhead Springs, and, and the uh, source of the Cunt River. Now, I'm serious. 6,000 years ago, that's what they called it, and now they call it the Kennet River. But it used to be the Cunet River, see? So things get changed over time. And this is a very feminine landscape. We're, we're in a very masculine landscape here in Nevada, under a sea of money. And yet this is a, a very fertile and feminine landscape. And this isn't the only sculpting. There's hills that are carved in female shape. And uh, I think that some civilization, highly advanced, lived here a long time ago and moved these stones. There's a thousand stone circles, 30,000 um, mounds and, uh, and barrels and tumuli. tumuli. Uh, it's an amazing place. So perhaps that's why the phenomena is taking place in Wiltshire because we sh we, some of us are being directed back to a root. I mean, that, that's older than the pyramids uh, by traditional dating. Now, Silbury Hill, uh, the, an ancient excavation caved in, so they have this square platform on it, and they have a guard here, and you can't go up it anymore, and I, I, I don't know if things are changed now, this next year or not. It's likely because of the problem with foot and mouth uh, disease that's scaring all the farmers and ranchers in England that we may not even be able to go out in the fields. They've cordoned off pathways and fields because they, so you spread the virus. It's, a, it's not a virus that we get as humans, but you spread it by tracking mud and dirt on your shoes. Um, this last year, this little beauty appeared uh, just before I got over there. So it was my first um, test in 2000 of, uh, of the electrostatic meter. Could I have video A, please? And, and, and the slide diminished. That's the ambient reading in the low teens. Go, go right into the circle. I know it's kind of, I'm not a professional, but you see it's gone up into over 70s. So even days after it formed, and, and in wet weather, there was an electrostatic signature that matched the signature of the physical crop. I, I think that's real important, because maybe that's why we, we feel so good when we go into crop circles, is that uh, they have a magnetic and electrostatic 
change, and, and possibly even other frequencies are involved, possibly. Okay, could you stop the video and we'll have an, another slide. Next, oh, I do it. Now here's Doe Kelly. Doe has a, a table in the room, uh, what's that room called, the old bingo room or something like that? Yeah, she and Andrew have a table over there, so be sure and go and visit them. She was right there with me, and we noticed magnetic anomalies with a compass. We had uh, Paul Vige was with us, and he um, was taking microwave readings with some kind of gizmo, and uh, they were anomalous. So there's there, there we have energy coming out. It's either coming out of the crop or it's a field that's invisible to us that is the same shape as as the formation. I think this is a very productive area of research. Uh, what do these crop circles do? They affect us, they affect animals, they affect the plants, affect the grain, possibly even the DNA. Well, they certainly affect our brain. I mean, our blood is iron, and if there's a, uh, it has iron in it. And, it, it, it <laughs> And, and uh, you know, if there's a magnetic field, you're, it's going to affect you, you know? So there, I think this is a very productive area of research, much more productive than the old method was, is it real or is it Memorex? Now, here's the thing. If it's real or Memorex, it breaks the goblet, okay? If it's a formation from beyond or a carefully thought and well-intentioned formation from some human agents whom the beyond may be working through or subsequent to their action may come and visit and invest the space with an, uh, an alteration. I don't think it matters. I think what matters is that these are real and they're magical and they affect us and, uh, and, and they're really marvelous. I highly recommend uh, you're, you're going to see these. I don't work for the Wiltshire Tourist Board either. I now this is just the kind of thing that can happen. I just loved this formation. Um, cost a lot to get into it. The Butler brothers didn't want anybody in, the, in their field, but we contributed to their charity and then we got to bring our little team in. Now, this, uh, this was very remote and it was actually several weeks old when we got there. And the energy doesn't stay there forever. Or does it? Because here, the next year, there it is. The ghost of that appeared. This, shot, this slide was by Walter Anderhoop from Switzerland. And uh, it's, it's still there in a way. My friend, Stace Tussle, placed herself in that little circle, number one, and had what we, th well, at least what I consider to be a uh, sign of the presence of this genuine energy. You close your eyes, you empty your mind, and there's something spinning in, in, in your inner visual field. There's a kind of uh, iridescent pink and purple-violet kind of, whoa, you know, Oh, gee, you know, this is just a wheat field, for God's sake. So what, after she had that, she began receiving pictures or impressions, which she drew as one B and one C, 
on the plate, and she asked us, we happened to be with Colin Andrews and, and Busty Taylor, and uh, she asked all of us, well, what, I, has there been a crop circle like this, like in shapes? I mean, something similar to that, a combination of that. I kept getting this picture, and I don't know why. Five days later. Now that was in her research notebook and we all said, oh no, we never saw anything like that. No, no. And then you forget about it and five days later something remarkably similar. I, isn't it curious that her name was Stace? You know, these kinds of evidences are anecdotal, but I think they're very important. You know very well that all religions based on anecdotal experience, and, and it's okay as long as people are being straight. You know, you can kind of get a sense of, well, I think that's, you know, concrete proof we'll never have. But I would put this in, the, in a category of precognitive, remote viewing. She saw. Here's another example. Um, when I went into this formation, I did not get much energy from the electrostatic meter. Uh, I'll show you a little film about that uh, later. And, um, but I, curiously, I did in this. I got maybe double. And uh, however we knew, as best we can know, we knew that this heart formation was man-made because the farmer tacitly admitted it, uh, Farmer Hughes, um, and they had a wedding in it. It was made for a wedding and he was paid a certain amount to have this kind of a hallmark uh, design in the field. So when I went into it, I, I thought, oh well, this is man-made and and it has a but it does have a little bit of energy. Judith Moore was in this formation sitting at the apex where the two cardioid shapes come out. She was sitting there drawing. And she drew this design and I photographed it just as coincidence and I said, well, you know, I, I've heard that this was, you know, made by Robert Irving and, and for the wedding and all that. I, I, you know, she says, well, so what? Doesn't matter. It's, it's a sacred place. I thought that was really cool. That was really good. Most especially I thought it was good because she did that drawing and again, five days later, I mean, she didn't go show this drawing around to people. And how curious that, I'll go back one because I want you to see this. In her drawing, there's a kind of funny tufted situation going on there and that's exactly what we found in this. This was not a spiral, this was clumpy and tufted. I thought, well, the coincidences here are, are just astonishing. Again, I would say, Precognitive remote viewing. Well, let's let's say clairvoyance, psychic ability. I mean, this has been enhanced by the presence of this energy in the formation. Now, uh, this I think was my favorite formation of the year. I'm I'm showing you this kind of awful shot of it because I want you to see the whole scope. Here's the formation, Milton Farm. This is uh, Salisbury Plain where they practice war games. Uh, the British are very serious. Listen, let's, let's not take it lightly because we, we've not been invaded over here. But they've been invaded as a country so long. I mean, it gets boring after a while. So they're really prepared. So there's helicopters and there's guys in the woods with, you know, guns and stuff. And you cannot fly over this except when their practice sessions are, are done with and you can get a little 15 minute window of time. But we didn't have that. I was in one of these flying lawnmowers called a, 
micro light. Oh my God. And, and so the pilot uh, said, well, I can't go any closer. So I had to take a telephoto and put that on, and I took a bunch of shots. That's my first shot. Not notice here, by the way, And, and I got this anomalous light not from the sun reflecting off the roof of the tin barns. There was no sun. <laughs> I mean, it was like, you know, British weather overcast. So I don't know what that is. And my, cam my camera is a professional Nikon, and, and I've never had that kind of a thing before. But I will tell you that every researcher that I know and, and visitors and investigators and croppies who have taken pictures have gotten anomalous energies recorded on some of their films. Oh, there's, you could do a whole book about it. Yes, thank you. Linda Howe has just published a book that has quite a few uh, pictures in it of uh, anomalous light forms, and I'll show you some more later. This is the formation itself. I was just really keen on it because it incorporated a, a tumulus. This tumulus could be from Neolithic times, probably was, and may have been a burial mound or may not have been. It, it may have been a marker uh, of some kind, uh, but the tumulus incorporated into the design I thought was real brilliant. The tumulus is covered with stinging nettles. You don't want to fall down. And climbing up to the top of it, the nettles are swirled clockwise. Swirled nettles, that's the first. I'm down here uh, taking readings um, in the te ambient readings in the teens, and I climb up to the uh, top of the tumulus, and the readings are 20 times higher. 20 times. That's the most uh, I've ever seen. It was a, a gorgeous formation, a extremely. Uh, extremely well made, whoever, however it got there. But this is not the most powerful part. This had the most energy. The, the right around the circumference of the swirl had the most energy. So we decided we ought to do some science. As an artist, I love the space out stuff, but I really like to be grounded, too. You can't do a painting if you can't s stand still and do the craftsmanship of the painting. So you have to be, have a world, kind of a foot in two worlds. So I, I love science because it gives us data that we can rely on for the most part. I mean, there's sure there's bad science, but I'm not going to go into that. We're trying to do ad hoc science. Here's Lucy Pringle, Chad Deepkin. Uh, Jim Lyons, Ann Smithel, Roger Taylor, and uh, Peter and uh, Isabel Maxwell Cave. Now, what we did was a variety of science experiments at Milton Farms. We walked down the pathway about 100 yards from the formation. We set up and we took everybody's brain wave uh, with a mind mirror. We which is in here. It's an electroencephalogram and gets, gives you a reading of the, your kind of baseline activity. Um, we did some bio systems testing on the zing points on the fingers and hands uh, by Ann Smithel. Uh, Jim Lyons did his amazing dowsing, which I have on videotape, by the way. Uh, I can't sell you the videotape but I'll give you a copy if you give us a donation. I have a 501c3 tax-deductible uh, research and educational 
uh, organization in Colorado, and I'm equipped to, just like a church, give you a write-off. In fact, I just got a Mac B4 computer as a write-off. Somebody donated it to us, and I get, yeah, so any spare airplanes? <laughs> this was organized by Lucy Pringle, uh, indefatigable uh, researcher who also uh, loves uh, her scientific evidence. And um, we, uh, oh yeah, here's a shot where we, we noticed underlying pathways. There's a good example on the video that I have. It shows an area where there were six distinct layers going in various directions in four areas of this particular crop formation. This is Dr. Hine with Peter Staples and the Mind Mirror EEG in the circle. The differences in the circle with all the measurements were more balanced, more normal. Biological systems and brain waves. Now, that, that was not, that's ad hoc science. That's the best we can do with no funding. To do, really do it, we have to ha do it a hundred times under various circumstances and have other people operate the equipment. And then we have a body of data that we can turn into information that can really help us to understand this. But, but at least we're doing a little bit. Again, the crop is down, but not the poppies. And you know, poppies are very fragile. You, you, don't, you touch them and they leave a bruise mark. So there were a lot of poppies poking up, and, and we were there the first day. Uh, Simeon Hine is, is just showing, holding up the meter, showing. But this is the... Uh, sort of look like a retro Klingon device. Um, uh, this is made for c the computer chip industry to check for any electrostatic charges which could mess up uh, the chip fabrication. Uh, we're using it for a, a totally different purpose. And, uh, and it works very well. It, it's just amazing how it works. Okay, now I need um, video C, please. I got to please and you get it. Video C. Now this happens to be um, Wolfgang Schindler using the meter, um, walking. Uh, He's a, a, a great um, German investigator, and he's walking uh, around. We're trying different um, methodologies, what works, what doesn't. We know there's this energy there, and yet um, how do we quantify it? We think the energy is anomalous. Why should it be there? Um, why should there be magnetic? Uh, now, here we are in a man-made formation done by Koch and Kyborg a couple of years ago. And you see there's really no... Uh, good, uh, okay, could you stop the video, please? And let's go back to the slides. Um, When this formation appeared at, at Avebury um, this year, last year, um, I was um, impressed with it. We went in, uh, we got electrostatic readings. Here's, um, here's a, another great researcher, Karen Douglas, who's the author of the marvelous Crop Circle Yearbook. Pretty much stopped doing calendars because that kind of dates it, you know. It's the Crop Circle Yearbook has many more photos. 
Bill Kelly has some, I have some, so you can see us. But she's the author of this with her husband, and she's using the electrostatic meter. See, walking out a tram line, out the standing crop, into the laid crop, and noticing um, that there's more energy, for some reason, electrostatic, in the laid crop. Well, we were also with um, Lucy Pringle in this formation, and our, our group, I had a tour group then, we decided to ask for a formation, like we've done before with C-SETI. Many of you have heard the C-SETI logo of the triangle was mm, brought about in part by a group of us meditating on Woodborough Hill and imagining this, this at the spur of the moment, agreed upon diagram, and pss, it is. I'll show you a slide of that later. But anyway, we wanted to try and kind of do that. So we made this <laughs> with our feet. Took us 10 minutes. I mean, you know, and it's really kind of crappy. <laughs> but, but it gave us a place to sit down, and we sat down in our circle. I just show it to you for fun. This is the Great Stones of Avebury, by the way. We're inside this 28-acre temple, which is powerful. So we sat down, and we imagined, and I, I let the, the group go whatever way they wanted. And everybody in the group wanted a triadic formation. We had just come from the one up the road, which was threefold geometry, and then everybody said, no, it's going to happen again. That's what we want. We want, we want to encourage, what did I lose? I lost. Okay. We wanted to encourage, right, can you hear me okay? <laughs> Something's wrong. Okay. Okay. We wanted to encourage the crop circle makers, whoever they were, with our minds and our hearts, to make a, another trifoil formation. And a couple days later, it, there it was in Lockridge. And a lot of people in the group thought it was a hit. Well, when I visualized it, I didn't see this kind of structure, but, but that's okay, you know. Uh, it still seemed pretty amazing. So this was by the side of the road in Lockridge, and you'd never find Lockridge unless you knew where it was, right in the Alton Barnes area of, of Wiltshire. And a Japanese tourist, Amika Kusaka, goes in and sits down to marvel. This is her first crop circle. She's come from Japan to see the crop circle. And she sees a spiraling light with her eye and had the presence of mind to snap a digital picture. Pretty good picture. These digital cameras are fabulous. I mean, that is, you know. So th this, kind of, this kind of thing happens time and time again. There's such a wonderful mystery going on. It's uh, as if there's a playground where something from beyond human can interact with us in a safe manner. I mean, it's not abduction stuff, you know, not scary. And look, the th a third trifoil appeared after that. Okay, well, you see a little bit of the white horse up there. That's a white horse at Alton Barnes, Milk Hill. And this beautiful formation appeared. Um, right when I got there, this gorgeous. But, but I went in and had, I could find no energy. No, I, I mean, there was no anomalous kind of energy. How, however, 
we're just starting this science, so don't judge us too harshly because we are not totally sure. I'm giving you the results of ad hoc stuff. And, and I, while I think it's real, in fact, I know it's real, there's still a lot of work to be done. It's another formation that lacked um, energy that I could measure. That's not to say that somebody else couldn't go in there and have epiphany. Because what is this? It's like a, some kind of sacred shape. It's a mandala. Now, but this is, this is kind of interesting. And I have to admit to my own artistic bias. And I would say, looking at this, I would say that this was a mistake. That's a judgment, a value judgment, and I'm not sure I'm right on that, but I'm going to uh, put it out. I would say, whoa, something went wrong there because it's not supposed to be quite like that. And um, within a couple days, it was corrected. <laughs> but still, I, I didn't get um, any, any anomalous energy from this formation. Now, here again, I have the same problem. I come up to this 5-3, five, 5-3, three, five, three, and this is I'm, it, it's off balance. Now, I, that could be pejorative of me to say, hey, this is a mistake, because how do I know what the cosmic scheme of things is? It, it could be a message. So, just understand that I said that it's a bias of mine. But, so I went in uh, to this formation thinking, well, you know, I don't know what, let's see, walk in and wow, it had a lot of energy. Who? I uh, went five times ambient. Walking in the field gives a reading of maybe 20 in the formation, goes up to 100. And a lot of people were having some amazing experiences in this. This uh, formation is at this uh, astonishing uh, location called Uffington White Horse. Uh, the White Horse of Uffington is, is thought to be pre-Celtic. It's that old, carved in the hillside, probably more like a dragon. It's extremely stylized. You'll see people wear little pins of it and think, probably it's a dragon. Um, and this appeared right beneath it. And uh, we got there a couple days after it had appeared. And uh, I, we could find no anomalous energy in it. And I, don't, I can't explain this. I don't know why. But I thought it would. You know, I mean, this is a mandala shape. This would have a lot of power in here, but uh, yeah, not electrostatically anyway, it didn't. If I had stopped uh, all my measuring and sat down and meditated, I might have got a different answer. Well, we've had just about every fractal uh, known to, to math, and uh, we seem to be inventing new fractals. New fractal forms. This I did not get to visit, but I show it to you because it's so uh, beautiful. This is a Steve Alexander picture. And, um, and it's ju I just wish I could have gotten to it, but you can't, you know, you can't get to every one. It's not possible. Now look at the setting. A radio telescope. It's pretty amazing. I mean, it seem, there seems to be some correspondence going on here. Tremendous controversy about this one. And I can only report uh, to you what I know from my own experience. I won't, I won't report rumor or even other people's anecdotes. Um, 
I went into this formation with um, Simeon Hine and, and Chad Deacon and Peter Sorensen and uh, Nan Liu, Dr. Liu, the Qigong master. And um, the formation measured negative, ne not positive voltage potential per meter. We hold the thing right about here, about a meter off the ground. And um, it measured uh, slightly negative. Well, the plants themselves, when you go down and measure the voltage around the plant, it's also slightly negative, negative one, two, three, something like that. And this formation measured uh, slightly negative, um, wh which was peculiar. And um, this is Dr. Nan Liu and, and Simeon Hine measuring. Dr. Liu did a Qigong exercise, which I've recorded on my video. I only have a few copies of that. It's in, it's in that other bingo room. And um, he did a Qigong exercise after we measured, and then when we went in and measured the space that he had left after he did this spiritual energy exercise, it altered. The, en the energy was positive. That was pretty interesting. That's actually very interesting. Um, we had a very little measurement of energy in this formation. I don't, we're, we were hoping to have Colin come here so we could have a back and forth about his magnetometer surveys and our electrostatic surveys, but he couldn't come, and he'll have a presentation later this afternoon. Um, and so I'll probably learn as much as you about w which ones he measured that had high magnetic readings, and if they correspond with our high electrostatic uh, differences. Now, I suppose I'm going to get a lot of flack for showing you things like this, but I, I want you to be informed about all the cause, all, uh, the implications anyway. You, may, you draw your own conclusions. I saw this formation from the side of the road by Will Wilsford, and I just didn't like it. I didn't, I just, eh, not my hooey. I, I, that was my... You know, and you have to kind of trust your instinct. This is how we learn about the other world that's bigger than us. Um, so what apparently has happened is someone has made construction lines. And, and, and then later, they came back and filled it in. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't I don't really think much of that. But I sure like what happened in the field afterwards. <laughs> Another uh, way of judging these things is with aesthetic sensibilities. I is this curve right? Are the places, you know, that other one I showed you that I didn't like, the curves were not right. They, they were lumpy. In this one, which I can guarantee you 100% was made by people because I was there. <laughs> and and I, I did a little filming of it. We were invited. Uh, it's a corporate sponsored thing. The farmer was paid. There's nothing illegal about uh, this formation. Um, could I have the video uh, D, please? Video D is not coming up. There it is. This is how some guys made this formation. 
they use a board with some rope. I, I, I think that's just the advertisement there. Alien. Okay, could you stop the video? And let's go back to the slides. That wasn't much, but it gives you an idea. It, there are crop circles being made by people. Some of those crop circles being made by people are wonderful, wonderful, sacred places, temples. Some are trash. So it's not a simple answer. This is a complex thing. The crop circles are not just one quick sound bite of an answer. They're complex. Many kinds of causal factors and many kinds of effects. People go into these and have epiphany. Once in a while, someone will go in and get sick and have to leave. It's a pretty individual at that point. Um, This appeared um, late in the season in, in a strange uh, field that uh, was barley, green barley. This is usually not growing in August. I don't, I'm not sure how that happened, but it, um, it too was man-made. And while I don't have 100% proof of that, um, I have a... Uh, I believe in my source, and um, it had a little energy in it, and people were having good experiences. So I think that when we come to evaluate the crop circle phenomena, it's a little bit different than the UFO phenomena. I mean, if, if somebody releases a mile or silver mile or balloon, and it goes, and, and then uh, somebody says, look, it's a disc. The ship. Well, what it's not, you know. And I think that we have something different here, and it's even more complex. Generally, sightings of craft have a core uh, number that are uh, unquestionably genuine. And you, you all know about this, and you're going to even find out more this week. Um, in the crop circles, some of the circles made by human beings for the right in purpose and the r with the right intention can also be magical places. And we have measured uh, the unusual energies in some of those uh, places and you quiet your mind and you get a transmission or you get a connection or a contact and uh, and that proves, that proves it. This was made by Matthew Williams, um, and he was put in jail for it. Somebody has applauded that. I don't know. What I, um, it was sort of a baiting thing because a certain popular radio talk show host um, had a guest on and they said that uh, you couldn't do a sevenfold geometry without a circumference circle so that the points could be marked off. And Matthew Williams uh, is a sort of um, pagan anarchist. <laughs> and so he said, oh, great. And he went out in the field. Well, he didn't get permission, and he didn't pay the farmer for the loss of crop, so the police came down on him and put him in jail. That's the first time in history, by the way. And, and I'm showing you all this kind of dark side, but don't worry, I'm gonna, it gets better. Uh, this formation was made by a group of school children, in, including at the behest of the BBC, uh, with their feet. They just did it with their feet.
Well, you know. Uh, my take on this, I think you're getting the idea, I hope I'm conveying it correctly, is, is I kind of like it all. I, I think that's quite amusing. I mean, I wouldn't go into it thinking it was a sacred temple, no, but, but it's okay, the kids can have some fun. I mean, you can see the soccer field over there, there's a school nearby. I, I don't, I'm not bothered by this. I, I don't, I think the politics of hoaxing is, is, is over amplified and is distracting us from the effect of the circle. This is a hoax. It was made to trick C. out in 1994. Michael Hesseman knows about that. But this isn't. I mean, this is astonishing. This is the kind of thing that we look for. So if you go to look for crop circles and you want to have that experience, what they can give you uh, in the in a way of contact or connect, connecting with the other, um, you'll find them. But you, you may have to you know, go through some silly stuff to get there. But the magic is there. The magic is there. Just amazing. Now, I, I should, uh, I went into this formation with a Trek 520 electrostatic detector and it blew it out. That's how much energy it, it had. We went into this one, measured this one. Electrostatically, there was a a shape of energy in the shape similar to the crop formation. The highest amount of electrostatic energy was in these boxes. Right. That's at Liddington Castle. This could be my favorite of all time because um, I could see no um, way that this uh, was was a hoax. This was not. It's not a hoax at all. This this is extremely powerful. In fact, when I got to the edge of the formation over here, this is usually a path you come in. Um, I paused and I stopped talking, and I uh, took a step into it, and there were hundreds of little beings um, smiling and laughing and they, they were, I don't know if they, what they were, elementals maybe or little fairy spirits or something and I said, whoa, and, and they said, welcome, welcome. You know, it was like, oh my God, this is the real thing. And um, later I was meditating up on the top of it and I realized that it was a ship. That actually, we're seeing a two-dimensional, that's quasi-three because of the crop, but it's like a diagram of something that exists in another dimension and has information and energy in that dimension. And um, I realize that, that the beings that I perceived on, that greeted me when I came into the circle were researching us. And we were researching the shadow of their ship. Well, that's real simplistic, you know, and you know, but it's, it's kind of a way I think about it. This um, is certainly one of my favorite uh, formations. Uh, could I have the video E, please?
I just wanted to show you some of Peter Sorensen uh, footage. It's a little, it's difficult to, under these flying circumstances. You know when you go to take aerial shots, you, you have to spend about 20,000 bucks just on <laughs> the equipment to take the shot because it has to be gimbaled and all this kind of stuff. And all we have is camcorders, so we're, you know, the footage is sometimes a little shaky. This dolmen over here, three big rocks, used to be a barrow, and um, a lot of people thought, well, it's, you're getting energy in this formation. And, and by the way, uh, could we stop video, please? And back to the slide. You're getting energy in this formation because it's coming from those rocks. There, this is an old sacred barrow, uh, a very long chambered mound, and um, and that's not that's not true. It, it, we we didn't uh, have that. Here's um, here's Simeon Hine with a Trek device measuring the am. It's it's consistent in the whole field. The measurement is, we'll say, for argument's sake, about 15. And then you go into the circle, and it melts the batteries. It's like, what? Masao Maki is here um, from Japan. He's a great researcher. He had his video camera battery drain. Uh, Simon Hines drained. Our cameras failed to work on the first day and the second day. This was a powerful formation. It had energy. And it did a lot of amazing things to people who had experiences which were priceless. Lifetime quality experiences. You know what, you know what I mean. Linda Howe was on the Woodboro Hill doing a meditation with a ball of light, which she made contact with. And uh, this formation was in the field the next morning in East, East, East Field at Alton Barn. Now, unfortunately, it happened after I left, so I didn't get to go into it, but I can I can bet there was some good energy in that. Um, this formation at Beckhampton uh, a couple years ago was, was remarkable because um, Maki-san had a tour group from Japan and they meditated. They wanted to ask for a, uh, we'll say, a Japonesque formation. And they meditated and prayed for three hours. And the next morning, they went to the airport to take a, their helicopter ride. And the pilot said, oh, I'll bet you want to go see that new origami formation. So you think, you see, something's going on that's wonderful. Could we put in the next tray, please? It's, it's absolutely magical and wonderful. And you don't want to get thrown off by the fact that humans make some circles. They do. Uh, and some of those are really good. You know, I have, every year I go to Stonehenge and have special access. Every year I have Epiphany in Stonehenge. This, this past year I went into Stonehenge and I put my head on a rock, uh, one of the stones, the Sarsen stones, and I had a flood of pictures like a movie at high speed. <laughs> wow! I thought, that's amazing. Stonehenge is man-made. Now, uh, is that not fitting in?
rotate it to zero. There you go. Okay, now we're going. Well, um, I guess I should do it. There. I'm showing you some of the mo most amazing forms to appear. This by Silbury Hill a few years ago. And I mean, these are just masterworks. Masterworks. Now this one, um, Lucy Pringle has reported that she took in a group of um, women and when they spent an hour in the formation, this is 914 feet long, that's three football fields. When they left the formation, 14 of the women, postmenopausal women, began menses. Uh, that, 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 I don't want to discourage you from going in. You know. It's a small price to pay. It wasn't a permanent thing. But here it is in, in its setting right across from Stonehenge with a couple of uh, tumulus. Very, very amazing area. A friend of mine was um, in England with a large format camera. This is six by seven centimeters, so the film is really big. And then this, this peculiar thing, which she'd never had before. It's a pro, this is pro stuff. I mean, this is a piece of uh, dirt on the slide, but that, something, something over Stonehenge. That could be a rod, I, I don't know. Could be. Delane Sherwood uh, um, had took this picture <laughs> over Telegraph Hill. I, I'm sorry for the focus there. It's there. there. Of a disc near the crop circle. Nick Nicholson took this picture uh, tantalizingly looks like it has a structure in it. And you notice it's not at the edge of the film, so it's not light leakage from the back of the camera or some easily explained away artifact. These are not easy to explain away. Jürgen Kronig uh, took this of some plasma form in the atmosphere over uh, Uppington. Steve Alexander took this shot of um, a discoid light that went across the field and then went right across the crop circle. And when it went past the tractor that the farmer was driving, it stalled the tractor. You know, and I ha you have to ask, uh, would, would this, wherever this comes from, be visiting hoaxes? I don't think so. Well, what a waste of time. We've Francine Blake took this picture in Eastfield of a magnificent uh, formation a few years ago. And almost like an ass. And again, she's using a pro Mamiya 645 camera. And uh, what, what's going on? Pro film, it's an astral ship. This is Peters. Um, he, he captured what he says is a ball of light. I'm sure it's a, sh a craft. You make up your own mind and we'll show you the video. Could I have video F, please?
you'll have plenty of time to see it because Peter's done a wonderful thing. He object stabilized it and then frame stabilized it. So you'll see. Um, what day is it one? Peter, you're here. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you for letting me show this marvelous <laughs> footage. There it is. Now I'm I'm sure shooting this is not Matt Williams. And this is not anything from this world. It's not an animal. It's not a bird. See, he, he shakes, stabilizes it. That's so cool. This thing is a craft. You know, and, and it's wonderful to have this visual evidence. Um, I'm so glad you were on that flying lawnmower, Peter, because he wouldn't have got it otherwise. And then we have something to share with you, which, which we get all the time. This part of the world is magical. There's phenomena going on all the time. And if you just put yourself in the right place, you're going to get balls of light, sheets of light, huge bursts of light, little twinkles of light, contact with astral beings. Whatever. This is a place to go have it. Uh, could I stop that video, please? Thank you. No. Now let's have video G. I don't think I finished my. How is my time going? Is some. I'm out of time? Oh, thank you. I can do it. Um, This is a shot by Donald Fletcher. Um, we need to run this through that computer program that Peter ran his to get it shake stabilized. But here, you'll see it a couple times. This thing goes over a Barbary Castle crop circle, and then it seems to speed up for near, near 180 miles an hour. And the people, they don't seem to see it. You know, comes down, makes a dip, and then pew, it's gone. Now that could be a ball of light or it could be a craft. We don't we don't know. There's kind of a not a clear delineation. But it sure is not a bird. Um, that's probably good. Uh, let's stop the video, please, and I'll, we'll do this. Can you turn the slides back on? And I'll, I'll wind this up. There's the CSETI logo. In 1992, we thought of this design at, on the spur of the moment, and it appeared the next morning uh, in a field uh, a couple miles away. So we thought that was pretty significant, and that's been repeated by other researchers in England many, many times. There's at least 10 instances of meditation and thought and projection affecting uh, the crop circle. This was the first formation I was in uh, where I knew there was a real phenomenon. It doesn't matter so much what people say. You've got to experience this. I went into this formation with Stephen Greer and Linda Howe and Sherry Adamack, and we had been to several other formations, and I was not impressed. I, I just, I didn't know. I said, well, I don't, I don't feel anything different. Big deal. Push down crop. Now I went in here, and uh, I said, ooh, geez, this feels good. <laughs> and I sat down, I got that spiral of energy pattern in my brain and uh, kind of had an epiphany right here. I thought, ooh, this was a good one. Very good. That was my introduction into the genuine crop circle mystery. Not the causal agents, but the effect that it has. I don't know 
how that got there. I don't know how this got there. But I meditated in this little circle one night at 12.30, and uh, suddenly a huge light appeared right in front of me in the field. I was standing meditating. It's not wasn't big enough to sit down. And, um, and this light put into my mind, howdy, glad you're here. I, uh, I didn't want to think about that. What, what I wanted to do um, was drink that in. And I suddenly became non-dual. There was no duality. It was all one. Those of you who have had that experience know that's one of the core motivating experiences of your life, that non-duality. It isn't, uh, 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 you know, all this is just like, oh, amazing. I have no idea how this got there, but this is absolutely one of my favorite formations. Now, I'm showing you some of these two and telling you quick stories because I want you to be assured, even though that, even though we've uncovered a lot of human fabrication in the fields of southern England, that doesn't, that's not where it stops. It, it goes beyond. These are the stones uh, of uh, Adam and Eve stones of Avebury. This is the field. Um, behind uh, Avery Truslow, and uh, we drove here at 12 at night. We parked our car right about here. Nobody's going down this farm road. Parked our car, hop over the fence, walk into the circle. I, I want to show you that because what I'm going to tell you is one of my uh, maybe one of my treasured experiences with the crop circle. I went into this crop circle very skeptical. I found, uh, where there's some CCCF people also, and there was a construction line that from which everything else could have been made physically if that's how it was done. And I found lines around the edge where the soil was pressed in by feet. And so I jumped to a tentative conclusion and I said, well, it's probably made by humans, but it's sure wonderful, whatever it is. See, I'm an, I'm an artist, I can appreciate art. I don't, it doesn't have to come from outer space to be wonderful. I mean, humans do wonderful things. So I'm in the formation at, and I meditate, and I, I didn't particularly get anything, but I decided to use my camera to take night photos of the swirls in the center. This, this 13 moons had alternating uh, rotations, clockwise and anti-clockwise. And uh, so I, I did that. I went around, I ran around and I took the center, I'd get over it and I'd say, oh, that'll be nice, you know, I'd take the stuff. And, um, I ran out of film. So I told my friend, I'll be right back. I have to go to the car and get more film. And so the way we came in, this is the way I went out, and I couldn't find the car. And I walked and I walked and I went, you saw the previous photo, it's right there. I walked for 20 minutes and the tram line disappeared, and the crop grew real tall and scraggly. The air got thicker, and there were over in the distance, as I'm walking, I'm thinking, what is going on? Over in the distance is a bonfire. But you, know, the, you don't have bonfires in England. There's no bonfires in England, okay? And here's a bonfire, and so here's some bushes, and I go, uh, up to behind the bushes, and I look over, and there are little short people, you know, four and a half, five feet, and 
they're cooking over the bonfires. And they're talking in what uh, seems to me to be some kind of Chaucerian English. And there's a dog and a chicken was out. And they're cooking this thing. And they got this little hut over there with thatched roof. And I thought, oh my god, I, 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 this is a time machine. Or I went through a time portal. And I'm witnessing this is history. I can be the first one. <laughs> you know, well, I know. But anyway, caution to the wind here on the edge. I didn't do that. I said, look, the, the pervasive belief system of this society is real Christian. If I come out there with cameras strung on my neck, and a big uh, Macintosh and a funny way of talking, and uh, they're going to think I'm from the devil. So I thought better of it, and I said, no, I, I'm not going to do this. Um, I want to do it, but I'm going to go back and get my friend, and we'll use the buddy system. So, <laughs> so I, I walked 20 minutes back, and, the, and finally the tram line disappeared appeared, a, the little ghost of it, and then it came, and the crop got lower, and the air got thinner, and I came into the formation, and I said, my God, I'm sorry, I've been gone so long. And my friend said, well, you wouldn't have been gone two minutes. I said, I've been gone for 50 minutes. No, you've only been gone two minutes. Now, settle down. What's, what, what's up? Well, come with me. You've got to help me, because I think I found a time portal, and I want to I have some safety <laughs> before I get a pitchfork through me, or whatever, <laughs> burned at the stake. And so we went right back out and went to the car. Uh, never found it again. And you know what? I don't care if that formation was made by humans or not. It was magical. That's what's important. These, uh, there's a great mystery going on, and uh, it's worth investing yourself in it a little bit. I was in this formation with Mary Bennett. This appeared over two nights. And, and uh, I was in that formation with Mary Bennett, and I thought it was contrived by people. I, you know. But I, I thought, well, so what? And I'm laying down. There's a, this is Avebury, by the way, that huge 28-acre temple. And I'm laying down on my back in the crop. And the, it's, it's August, beginning of August, the uh, first week of August. And the Perseid meteor showers were supposed to be full at that night, except that it was socked in. It was a thick cloud cover over everything. You couldn't see one star. So I'm on my back, and, and a circle opening in the clouds appeared above. And Mary Bennett's author of two-thirds and works with David Percy. We hope to have David uh, Percy come next year to talk about something amazing. This area is an analog. Time is up, is that set? OK, this area is an analog of the Cydonia region on Mars. I mean, it fits perfectly. It's amazing. Anyway, opening. Ship goes right over the opening, along with three meteorites. But the ship. So, what's that? Okay, I'm I'm thinking my time is up, so uh, I think I have to relinquish the stage to uh, my next uh, speaker. I believe is Ed Sherwood. <laughs>